Today we are going to once again talk about async await. Now this video is going to be a direct sequel to my first video on the topic. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest that you follow the link that's appearing somewhere above the screen and you go check it out because we are going to start again exactly where we left off in the previous video. Let's get started. So if you remember, we ended up at a point where we had our free async function, get user ID, get user first name and get user last name. The first function was allowing us to get an ID and then using this ID, we were able to make subsequent calls in order to get some extra information on our entity. So for instance, we are able to get the first name of the user and then the last name. And finally, we could take all this data and use it. Here, we were going to display it in the console to greet the user. And some of you made a very good remark in the comment. It's that in this code, all the calls are made one after the other, meaning that the first call is run, the thread is blocked until it has returned. Then the call returns, we get the value. We make the second call, we block until it returns. We make the third call, we block until it returns. And finally, we use our data. But when we take a look at this code, we can see that, of course, we need to wait for the first call to finish before we do anything else. But then these two calls, get user first name and get user last name, well, since they use the same piece of data, which is the user ID, it would make perfect sense to have them run in parallel. So this is something that we would like to optimize. And of course, as we can expect, well, this kind of use case is going to happen a lot when we use async await in our apps. So in order to understand what we could optimize, we need to take a look to focus on the call side and really understand what's happening. Because actually, in this line, there are two things happening at once. First, we are creating a background task. So it's a task that will call this function on a background thread. And then there is the second part, which is executing the task. And that's what the await keyword stands for. So basically, we are doing two things. First, we create a task and then we execute the task and we block until the task has done, has finished its execution. So if we want to be able to run our two calls in parallel, we need to be able to take these two steps and do them separately, meaning that we want to first be able to create all the tasks that we need. And then once all the tasks have been created, we want to run them all at once in order to have our parallel execution. And this is a use case that is actually so common that there is a new language construct in order to deal with it. So I will just rework the code a little bit. You'll see that first I'm going to remove the await keyword because we no longer want to block when we are creating our task. And in order to just only create the task, we're going to use this new way of writing code, which is to do an async let. I'm going to write async let when I am declaring both my variables. And what async let means is that we are not actually storing the first name or the last name, but rather a task that when called is going to be able to retrieve the first name and the last name. So now we have our two tasks, we could say our task handles, and now we need a way to actually run the task. Well, to run the task, we just have to use the keyword await. So I'm going to put await in front of the print statement. And just like this, now the compiler is able to infer that here on these two lines, we are creating our task. And then on this line, we are running the task, meaning that these two tasks, getting the first name and getting the last name, they're going to be run in parallel. And then when they are done running, the compiler is going to be able to put the code that will get the return value and then run our statement, which is a print statement that will print the first name and the last name to the console. So that's something that's super nice with this async alert construct is that with it, we are able to run code in parallel in a way that is extremely simple, but also extremely readable. When you take a look at this code, you know, there is very little noise. We could say we create our tasks, but we create them with the minimum possible syntax. We just add this async attribute to our variable declaration. And then in order to run the task, we just need to actually just use the task as if they were their return value. And we need to put the await keyword in order to let the compiler know that, yeah, indeed, we actually want to run the task and use their return value. And this is actually so simple that what I wanted to do for this video, I wanted to compare what this kind of code would look like if we were to use combine. Because combine is, after all, a framework meant to deal with asynchronous code. So let's take a look at what the code would look like if we were to use combine instead of async await. OK, so you can see that I've had to re-implement my free function. This time, instead of being async function, they are function that return an any public and the any publisher will return the value. Now, just like before, I've implemented all of this using mocks, so I'm actually returning a just publisher. But let's focus on how the code to orchestrate all the calls looks like. So the code is here. You can take a look at it. It's in this function called greet user using combine. And you can see that, well, even though it performed the same job, there is much more code and we could say there is much more noise because first we need to make our first call. Then we need to declare that we want to have a sequential call. So having one call made after the other 
browser and in order to do this using combine we need to call the flat map function and then we need to have our two calls to get the first name and get the last name run in parallel and in combine we need to use zip in order to declare that this is what we want to have this parallel execution and then finally we use sync in order to get the result value and run our business logic which is still printing to the console a greeting message so we are doing the exact same thing than we were doing with async await but this time we do it with combine and we can see that yeah indeed of course the code is a little more noisy and we could say it is much less readable so what should we conclude from this well we should definitely not conclude that async await is better than combine because the scope of combine is just so much broader than async await combine for instance can deal with publishers that produce value over time async await cannot uh, combine can also deal with things like back pressure async await cannot do it so the scope of combine is much broader but what we can see is that when when we want to use combine for very simple use cases basically having to deal with sequential and parallel calls well we can see that indeed async await is a tool that is well much better suited for the job because it is much more focused on this very limited scope so basically once async await will be officially released i think we can expect to see that it will take over as the go-to solution for very simple use cases that deal with asynchronous code but i don't expect combine to go anywhere it will still be very useful when we want to deal with asynchronous use cases that are much more complicated so that's all for this second video about async await as you can see step by step we're starting to get a very good picture about how async await works and the kind of use cases that it is going to be a very good tool to solve now you know how things work on youtube liking commenting subscribing sharing you can do all of that stuff once again thank you for watching and see you next time